And I know in the very beginning of the Orthodox Church, in the New Testament Church, um, it was done by oral tradition. So do you believe that that, I mean, I know that there are people out there who question all this. What, were there ears in the beginning? Um, were there plain and precious truths that were lost in mm -hmm. the very beginning? How do you reconcile this for, for all those who are watching today to say we have actually the, the truth from the apostolic, the, the, the apostles, so it, it, nothing has changed. How do you reconcile well, that? Well, there's two kinds of tradition. Uh, there's traditions of men that our Lord condemns in Mark chapter 7, I believe. And then there's the divine tradition, the holy or apostolic tradition. Mm -hmm. You know, the scripture has condemnation for traditions of men. But St. Paul says, follow the traditions which you have been taught. Whether keep by the traditions. My, keep yeah. the traditions, whether by my word or by my epistle. Mm -hmm. So even in, in, I think that's Thessalonians where it says that. Yes, uh, so it does. So even in the early New Testament writings, we have Paul exhorting us to follow not just the written, but also the oral traditions. Okay, that's what I want to talk to you briefly about. Uh, one of the questions that, that I had was, what are the traditions? Now, you know, in the Protestant faith and in the LDS faith and in the <laughs> Restorationist faith, there's a lot of uh, churches and evangelical faith and non-denominationalism, um, Lutheran and, and so forth, we see, um, do we see them carrying on these traditions? I mean, that was something that, that I wanted to ask you. If you could address that to those who are watching, what are the traditions that, that Paul actually talked about? Well, you know, like I said, there's two kinds of tradition. Uh, every interpreter of the Bible has a tradition. Just, just a matter of which tradition do they have. The Lutherans have a tradition. The Calvinists have a tradition. The Methodists have a tradition. But is it apostolic? Yeah. Does it go all the way back to the apostles? That's the question. Okay, so what did the apostles have as a tradition? Well, in the New Testament, they often tell us what to do, but they don't tell us in their writings, in, in the New Testament writings, how to do it. Okay. Well, the apostolic tradition fills in the gaps, tells us not only what to do, but how to do it. Okay, but is there anything like with the laity, with what they do as a tradition? Um, I know, you know, when I came here and experienced the, this church, that there's head coverings. Women would have the head coverings and, and there would be a lot of holy kisses uh, right. going around. Mm -hmm. um, I saw that it, you eat downstairs after the service. There's fasting. Right. Are those some of the traditions that you yeah. were talking to? Because I just want to get point okay. out, what are those traditions? Okay, let me first of all say that traditions are not adding to the faith. Okay. They're just incarnations of the faith, Got manifestations it. of the faith. Like uh, the meal that we have after our Divine Liturgy on Sunday is the Feast of Charity, the love feast, the agape meal that St. Paul talks agape about. Agape is love, yeah. St. Paul talks about yeah. it in 1 Corinthians. Originally, they had the meal first, and then they celebrated the Holy Communion. Hmm. That created problems as people ate too much, drank too much. Some people didn't get any food, and there were complaints. Well, that's when he was talking about examine yourself. Examine because yourself. Because there are people who are actually getting kind of drunk before exactly. coming to the... the the Eucharist, okay, I and remember. so later, yeah. the church said, okay, we're going to do communion first and then have the agape second. Okay. And so we fast before communion for that reason. So you fast the <laughs> night before and nothing touches your the Orthodox Christian's mouth until No food the or drink. We can okay. still brush our teeth and things like that, but no okay. food or drink. And that's every week? Every week. Every week before you come to right. service, okay. There's always, uh, you know, a sense of preparation. Yeah. You know, before the apostles received the gift of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, they had to prepare, fast, and pray. So we prepare for yeah. great things in our life. Communion is the greatest of all. So we prepare ourselves by fasting, by prayer, by self-examination. Um, and if we need to, we, we confess before we go to communion. Okay, so are there any more traditions that you'd like to address? Sure. You know, the church prays toward the East. You know, the church tells us to pray, but never tells us to pray specifically toward the East, but it does refer to Christ as the Son yeah. of Righteousness. Um, and so that's one tradition. The sign of the cross is another big tradition that we do. Yeah, so the sign of, sign of the cross, I, I've seen that you usually do it with your, your yes. three fingers, right? It's a way to physically confess your faith. Like, okay. our, we put our hands like this, the three fingers together represent the three persons of the Divine Trinity. Okay. And the two fingers resting on our palm represents the human and divine nature of Christ, oh. fully God and fully man. Great, wow. And so okay. every time we make the cross, we're saying he died for our sins 
and he's fully God and fully man, one of the Holy Trinity. Wow, okay. So you do it in the way I know that you've done it this way, east to west, right? Yeah, right to left. And so I know the Roman Catholic Church, they go the other way, west to yes. east. So it's just making that distinction. I mean, it's all the cross. We're yeah. not going to say that they're that they're not making the sign of the cross. Yeah, yeah. But the yeah. oldest tradition is to go from right to left. Okay. Because, you know, the emphasis in the scriptures is always the right. The okay. right hand of God, the right yeah. hand of the Father. That right oh. hand is glorified in strength. Got it. You know, it says in Scripture. So Makes sense. Everything is focused on the right. So we start there. So what other traditions outside of that that you might want to declare? Some other things that people might not be aware of that, that you do outside uh, of that? Well, we, we try to worship with all of our senses. Okay. The sense of sight. We see the beautiful icons, which bear witness to Christ's visible incarnation. Uh, we worship God with our sense of smell. We have the holy incense that we offer to God in our prayers. Um, that that is a question I want to uh, just address a little bit because you do have incense here. I, right. I've been here many times uh -huh. to see that, and a lot of other churches don't have incense. I know that. Um, I've been in many churches, and you don't see incense. You usually see it in the Roman Catholic Church or, or the Eastern Orthodox Church. So why incense? Well, two reasons. Uh, now, first of all, it's been the tradition of the people of God, even since the days of the Old Testament, to offer incense to the Lord. Um, secondly, it's prophesied in Malachi. Yeah, it's 111, I believe, right? Yeah, 111. Yeah. It says, uh, From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, my name shall be great among the Gentiles. Yeah. And that they would offer incense and a pure offering in every place. Yeah. Yeah, the pure uh, offering, too. The, pure, the, the Eucharist, the pure offering. The pure offering and, is the Eucharist. And the holy incense. Wow. And, and that was a prophecy. Prophecy. In the future. Yeah, for the Gentiles to be offering incense yeah. to the Lord. That's the church right there. Why because, do you think that so many, and that's a tradition that a lot of other churches don't adhere to. Why do you think that's a, well, they think, an issue with that? They think that when Christ fulfilled the Old Testament, that none of it carries over today. Hmm. But we see even in the book of Revelation, hmm. there's offering of incense yeah. by the angels, no less. And we also see the chanting of holy, 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 the offering of incense, the lighting of candles, candles. The, the vestments, the ca crowns that they cast before the throne. Yeah. All of this is liturgical language yeah. that we still do today. Wow. Prostrate, all of that. Yeah, I don't. Prostration is something that they did. Um, I mean, you see prostration. I, I had an experience with prostration. I didn't really participate <laughs> on it because I think you actually have to be a little bit more um, conditioned to do that physically. Uh, but it, it is a uh, it is something that the Jewish faith did, and then I know also Islam. They also do a prostration. Oh. But your prostration is is probably not to those levels, right? Well, you know, you read often in scripture about. Um, gestures of obeisance, bowing, and things yeah. like that. You read about people falling on their face before the Lord. And, and so we, we do practice prostrations. Uh, it's a way to humble yourself okay. before God. It's a way to uh, weaken the flesh, yeah. in a sense, because you're repenting yeah. and trying to bring the flesh into subjection to the Spirit. Oh, okay. But it's not any kind of good work that we're trying to earn something from God. Yeah. It's a way to humble ourselves before Him and okay. show Him submission and worship. Got it. Wow, we're, we're, we're getting a lot of insight with you today. Um, I know that. Is there anything else that you would like to talk about, traditions? Or? Those are the ones that, that come to mind. Okay. Um, but I'm sure there's many, many more. Yeah. But they're all basically, like I say, manifestations of the faith. Okay. Like the cross yeah. that we do. Ma yeah. Manifest the faith.